How's life treating you? Oh, busy. Horribly, horribly busy. I mean, it, it's good, but it's just constant, ongoing. I literally wrote a tax check, got some other IRS paperwork, paid for the AMTA membership five minutes before you message me. Like, I'm always up to my eyeballs. I've got a class tomorrow, and then next week I'm in Arkansas for a week teaching, so. So it sounds like you got some traction. <laughs> the bills get paid. Uh, the, the overall industry is, is still angry because they say it's not massage, and I keep going, well, if it's not massage, that we don't need licenses in all 50 states. Yay. And they go, but, 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 and I, but what? Dude, they're, they're, they're a hard fucking group to penetrate. I got a taste of them last week. I'm teaching so. a course on the uh, 18th and 19th, and I promoted the massage group. I said, hey, look, there's no CEUs. There's not a certification. You're going to yeah. get a certificate for completing the course. I'm going to show you the techniques that I personally use to help my clients. Yeah. And this is what I built the business after. And it's like, when I threw it to the general public, people are like, holy shit. Fucking massage world's like, I'd rather go take this course that's $179. Oh, this is highway robbery. Well, it's like, so they, it's such a poor mentality. When they say highway robbery, they mean you're charging too much or the other course is? No, no. They said I was charging too much. Oh. It's a two day, it's a two day, 10 hour course that I was charging, I think 1400 bucks early bird, $2,000. And I was like, but here's the thing in, in CE terms, that's an expensive class in other industries. It's not, it's not. And so, you know, I said, fuck it. I'm going to open it up to the general public and you know, people are going to come. And I'm going to show you how to stretch hamstrings and glutes and ankles and, you know, be of use with your hands. Yeah. You know, and you'll practice, you'll get better. And the world turns. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I, so I didn't, I didn't set this up the way I could have. Like I had a moment where I was like, wanted to show you what I'm doing with the equipment and flipping cameras and, and stuff. And then I was just like, no, nah, it's not, it's not necessary, but we did a, a conference the other day, so I have an apprentice here so that as I'm flipping cameras, I, you can see me working on somebody. And then one of our students, Lib, is in New Jersey, and her son, Christian, is in massage school. So four people are working. She can see me. I can see her. We're giving feedback back and forth. And the, the amazing thing about it was when it was over, nobody questioned it at all. It was only later that Lib was like, oh, my God, like I, I could learn directly from you and I could just do it from my studio. And I go, yes, this is what I've been trying to tell the industry. And they're not listening. Yeah. Like I'm flipping four camera angles, putting anatomy on screen with like wireless audio with filters like this is top notch. Like this is 75 percent less cost for the same information. And the therapists are going, oh, but we want hands on. They're a weird, like, provincial industry that yeah. doesn't want to look they, at well, the greater world. You know, it's it's just a new thing, and they just, they can't get out of that mindset that, like, you can learn by watching and, like, having access to the instructor over and over and over again. Yeah. I remember when I was learning how to stretch, I would search YouTube for someone to just do a fucking stretch tutorial. Just show me, like, you know, like, if I had a body in front of me, I could figure yeah. it out. You know, well, I mean, students, it's working. Like I'm teaching, I'm making money. The students like it. Things are growing. I'm going to release suspension in the new year. You know, I have to go to my lawyer and go, okay, now we're at the edge. And I know what he's going to say. He's going to say, listen, teach online. When you teach online, you have extremely limited liability. Don't coach them to break the law. Don't encourage them to break the law. Don't say your certification gives them a license to break the law. Discourage them for breaking the law in whatever form in, in their communities. You can teach online with almost zero liability. And I'm like, okay, just as long as you say it, Mr. Lawyer, because 
other educators or massage therapists are likely going to report me to the state board in the new year. It's already happened once. And that was from somebody in another state who didn't like something I said. This is what I'm open to. Like, I can't keep pushing stuff out without more people just hating on me. And it's not because students are doing it and it works. The students keep, when they try it, they're amazed that the clients are okay with it because they cannot break out of this box. They're like, oh, like, you know, I could try a mat thing and, you know, I could try a little of this, but like, you know, my clients want massage. And it's like, no, massage is what you sold them. You are selling stretch. Nobody bats an eye. You, I guarantee you don't have a PhD in kinesiology to stretch people. No. And you're, you're doing just fine. It's almost easier for me to take someone like you who's an entrepreneur and teach it to you and get you to do it than it is for me to try to retrain massage therapists. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I wonder if, if it's more to it. Like, are they lazy? They don't want to get on the ground. Because it, it's funny, I you know, I talk to massage therapists all the time. I have a buddy in New York yeah. who he's like a big time massage therapist, but his books aren't filled. And I'm like, dude, stop fucking rubbing people. Everybody rubs people. And like now people like you have to look a certain way if you're gonna rub people. You know, like you have all these skill sets. Be the neck and shoulders guy. Be the fucking neck and shoulders guy. That's it. Market, I take care of whatever you got going up here, and that's See, it. That, you don't have to glide. That kind of marketing, you don't have to the, sell your soul. I so I I think that massage therapists respond to prestige, and here's what's happened because they have a license. Oh well, I'm I'm part of an elite class of of people who have a license. <clears throat> I'm fucking bulldoze. And it's like. They're all wondering why they can't stand out in a marketplace when 9,000 people in their city offer massage. They, they can't break out of that. If I talk to students and I say, listen, in your marketing, on your Instagram, in your social media, when you make video, when you talk to people on your website, when you communicate with clients, I want you to tell them that you're a soft tissue pain specialist. And they're like, can we, can we say that legally? And I'm like, does the law say you can't? You're still operating on your massage license, but the packaging is different. That's what they, that's what they can't, because here's the deal. You understand the business. I see your posts. I see you starting to reach out to other entrepreneurs because you're trying to find other people who think like you do. Because if I continue to try to reach out to massage therapists, a lot of them are painfully slow or they just don't quite get it. They just don't quite put the pieces together. They're kind of like doing a little mat work, but they're afraid to get rid of the table. Yeah. And yeah, they're not, they're not the group. It's they're not the group at all. They're not the group. I'd rather teach a bunch of human beings like who, like, hey, I want to try this out. Online. You know? And here's, you know, I don't know what's going to happen. We, we do this as a hobby. Let me teach you a hobby. Let, let, me, let me teach you how to use your hands. So I started watching Bob Ross recently. And I remember seeing Bob Ross as a kid, but it's kind of enlightening to watching at 44 years old. And I realized, wow, you know, Bob Ross was probably not loved by other artists. But he was loved by the public. Because he was like, anybody can paint. I'll show you. Come on. Happy little trees. That's yeah. what the time and size jam is. That's what, what I've been saying for, for nine years or eight years until the jam shut down because of COVID. It's like I was just teaching anybody who showed up and it worked. It was successful for my business. It built things. It was a huge time so and energy on, hold on, hold on. Back, back up real quick. So yeah. time and size jam, you would just hold an open Dude. class and teach. No, go ahead. Go ahead. You would, you would just be like, hey, Saturday morning to 8 a.m., show up. Would you charge them? Like, did they become therapists? So here, but here, look at this. L listen to what I'm saying. 
I'm in Austin. Austin prides itself on being amazingly progressive and open. And I'm like, no, you're not. You're not at all. You're an extremely closed, pretentious city. I love your tacos and people. I love the culture, but you're, you're very stuck up in a lot of ways. Mat work was not allowed in my community at all. There was no massage facility that was hiring for it. It wasn't available. Like massage therapists had never seen it. So I did, I decided I'm going to create it. I love the mat work. I've done the mat work. I was in Baton Rouge, you know, whatever. So <clears throat> what happened was some people in the acro yoga community were interested in Thai massage. I showed up one night because they did some Thai massage share or something. And when I showed up, this young lady said, oh, you like, you teach Thai massage, don't you? And I was like, yeah. She's like, would you show us some stuff? And we worked together for eight or 10 of us for three hours. When it was over, this young lady came up and was like, can we do this again next week? And we did it every week for eight years. And here's what I did. The first three years, we didn't charge anything. We only started charging because we needed money for the rent on the facility that we were using regularly. So I would show up because students would take intro or table tie with me, my beginning classes, but they couldn't practice it where they worked. So I dedicated my time to a community bodywork event where they could come practice. I did five hours each week. I would work on you for free. I would teach you for free. You could bring your friends for free. I'd show you how to work on each other. Massage therapists didn't really support the event. You had a bunch of just random people. And if, and if you ask massage therapists, they're like, well, this isn't, this isn't safe. These people don't know contraindications. And I'm like, I'm right here. I can see what they're doing. They're fine. They're just learning how to do some nice little work on their friends and family. And the ones who are really interested ask me questions. I teach them. We keep working together. Over the years, there were friends of mine who would, you know, a massage therapist would wander in. Josh would work on them. This massage therapist would freak out and go, where do you work? And Josh is like, oh, I teach violin over at the music school. And they're like, oh, my God, you're not a licensed massage therapist? They're like, oh, my God, your work is amazing. And he's like, oh, yeah, I've just been hanging out with these guys and work with them. Massage therapists don't respect it unless it's a CE class. They, they, don't, they don't respond, in my opinion, at all, by the way, to education. They're not interested in education. They're interested in prestige and status conveyed through certifications and paperwork and licensure. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Other people, if... if and I don't, Bullshit. And I don't, yeah, but I don't know why I've never had another industry hook into what I'm doing. Never personal trainers, never yoga teachers. The most was like the acro yoga community, a little bit. Yeah. Wow. But they all follow you. Who follows me? The personal trainers and the massage therapists. Massage, some massage therapists follow me because... There are 1,300 YouTube videos on my channel. I'm obsessive about video production. I mean, even this, I didn't have to record this, but I was like, hey, if we're going to do it, why don't I record it, right? <clears throat> we put out so much video compared to every other educator that, like, we, we build a following, but the uh, overall industry, the overall industry is just like, I, we, we, I, I don't understand. This isn't massage. What, what the hell is this? And you can have a great service but who's going to buy it yeah and i don't mean clients i mean students yeah the other thing is is let's say i'm teaching online it's completely legal for me to do this by the way i can start running ads to the yoga community and i can start running ads to personal trainers or stretch therapists if those communities start studying with, with me in any numbers massage therapists will get angry because they want to be part of an elite class that the information is only for them. That's weird. I, I wonder what happens. Like, is it the certificate? Is it the license? License. Like, it's just like, like, it's almost like they want to like hover over that license. 
I have a light. I know I'm a licensed professional. Then they're trained that way in school and the laws are set up that they have to do that. If they're going to do massage, make sense. Hey, Rob, do you know how many like unlicensed massage there, like unlicensed people are running around doing massage? Uh, a lot. Like, uh, like more than we think. Uh, probably. Yes. Making money. I just had a, a debate, or not a debate, I just had someone on my podcast talking about human trafficking. Every, every massage law in existence exists because we have to protect the public. And I go, from what? Like, what rogue massage therapist is killing people? And they're like, no, prostitution. And I'm like, so make prostitution legal. And they're like, oh my God, you're an anarchist. And I'm like, what the fuck? Does, listen, I work on people on a mat, completely clothed, and I film everything because it's done clothed. You can do it publicly. What the fuck does my industry have to do with human trafficking? And yeah. they're like, do you see? Like, the thing is, I, I have a license, but I ain't in that box at all. And that's what part of the challenge is, is like the industry wants me to conform to their regulatory standards. And I'm like, dude, it's too late, bro. Like, I'm not breaking laws, but I'm not delivering information the way you trained me to deliver information. I've got four cameras, and I'm recording so much video, it's coming out my goddamn ears. We're, we're so far ahead. Like, and as much as I may complain, I'm making money. Like, it's during COVID. Business, business was hurt. I'm making money. I'm fine. I'm, I'm coming out of COVID better than the one better, I went in. Yeah, that's, that's, that's interesting. The long-term thing is all the stuff I'm offering, you know, who's going to buy it? Who's the ongoing market? I suspect to some degree we haven't found them yet. Yeah, I think they're out there. I think, you know, from this conversation, from this conversation, I feel like I'm going to start talking about, like, like there's something you said. You said you don't need a PhD in kinesiology to be a stretch therapist. So I think that by starts to debunking some of these myths of what people think we are, you know what I mean? Like just start to put it out there and let people know that, hey, look, you can learn this stuff. Like whatever the hell they teach in massage school, you can learn it on your own. Yeah. Like information is out there and there's places that you can go to and learn this stuff. You know what I mean? Like, you might be better off with a stretch therapist than with your chiropractor. Yeah. So I've I had, think had, I think putting it out there and getting, and getting people who are like, you know, like, you're going to have a bunch of people who are going to be interested. I'm like, wow, that looks interesting. Oh, I don't have to be a, a such and such. You know, okay, cool. Yeah. You know? I, the the time massage jam the way we shifted because of covid we're doing it online and i know that right now we're not eliciting much of a live response people aren't working with us live but i'm using four camera angles we do a little 30 minute sequence give and receive i'm putting anatomy on the screen and explaining this is how we work on your hand and arms how are you running those four cameras? Like, how are you controlling? $10,000 worth of computer and camera equipment and software. I can yeah. teach people how to do it, but I have to go through like various layers of software. I've got four different DSLR cameras running with USB 3 cables into my computer. And then I'm using some software called OBS that, o that Twitch streamers use. It just allows me to flip, like set up scenes and flip camera angles. Once I figured out how to do the, the cameras like this, because I'm using a DSLR right now plugged in, it's not a webcam. In addition, what I can do is I can load graphics and anatomy up. And once you get good, you can load it all up. And then I'm teaching a live interactive class from four camera angles with anatomy on screen. And meanwhile, what does the industry say? But we can't learn online. And I'm like, no, that's what they told you because they have brick and mortar businesses and they're scared as fuck of people like me coming along with anarchy and the internet backing me and going, I'm going to teach you some stuff for $7 a month. Yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, again, as much as I complain, no, we're fine. The difference is I can scale what I do globally. I've, I've thought about it so many times, like they can take, you know, a six hour class and a six hour class in a day might be like two, $300 for what I normally charge. But I go, let me teach it online, break it into two hour chunks. And we're going to meet three times a month. It's a hundred dollars. And I know the math. If I get 100 students, which is two students per state, I can make $10,000 a month doing that. But right now, I'm having to teach the industry how to learn online. Because they're like, no, but we learn hands-on. And oh, I got to have a partner. But it's working. Like, it's growing. COVID bumped the dial towards online education. And... Travel is inordinately expensive. People still don't understand how I can do what I'm doing with the subscription service because they're like, dude, you're only charging seven bucks. Like, how are you doing that? And I'm like, I just record everything and give it to them. And they're like, but they're not, they're not going to take your classes. I'm like, yes, they are. They just want it in a different form. There's 600 hours in the vault. There's 600 hours in my classroom instruction in that vault now. It's too much. It's like the Grateful Dead. You got to be a fan to go dig through the archives to find some show from two years ago. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, as and, and, and it all comes from like you just recorded everything. You you record everything. Yeah, like you said, man. So, like you you teach a class. Yeah. And you make money off of teaching that class, and that's great. But here's the deal. I make more money selling that footage at $7 a month than I do from teaching the class. Yeah. And you're like, and you'll Four. continue to make, you'll continue to make money. Dude, I listen, we, we've sent around and done the math. We have about 500 subscribers. It's been at 500 for, nah, it's been at 500 for a year, two years, almost. It kind of peaked out before COVID and it just, it just plateaued. COVID was like, like people come and go, right? So if you're charging seven bucks and you have a thousand subscribers, that's $7,000 a month. I had to take a colleague of mine who helps me with some programming stuff. And it was like, cause I went from an in-person business to a digital business. Yeah. And I was like, you became, dude, what, a, you became like, a digital what, guy. Like, what can we like globally? What can we do? And he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, dude, like if there's no, like if people in Latvia and Germany and Costa Rica can sign up for my thing online, he's like, oh, numbers wise, like, listen, we, we have to extrapolate. I, I'm just going to tell you that, you know, like he's like, how many do you think you can get? And I'm like, I think I can get a thousand. If I continue running ads, eventually I can get a thousand. And he's like, well, globally, he's like an order of magnitude. And I'm like, bro, English, he's like 10x. I'm like, 10,000 subscribers? I'm like, dude, that's $840,000 a year. And he's like, I know, which is why I've been encouraging you to have a digital business. He's like, once I saw your business going digital, it was why I grabbed you and went, Lou, we got to look at this. Because you're not selling to a geographic market anymore. Like, again, we, you know, we do these consults, just like I'm talking to you. I'm just pressing buttons and flipping cameras, showing you work, putting anatomy on screen. There's no geographic borders, and here's what it does to the cost for the students. Drastically lowers it. Regularity. You want to study with me every month for six hours live? It's $100 a month. Let's do it. And all the footage from this to those group live streams, to the private live streams, to the session I did on Kristen today. She's one of the apprentices. I'm getting them ready to teach. And the first thing I do when they start teaching is I bring my computer and cameras and I record their entire class from four camera angles. Everything's recorded. As much as possible. As much as yeah. possible. Yeah. Yeah. There's no such thing as bad content. So, and man, like I just, 
Like, I'm just thinking about like where my business is today and from the conversations that you and I had, you know what I mean? And just like, just being open to like, okay, cool. Like, yeah, there's a bunch of different things I could do. I could be free with this thing. What do you want to do? I'm so free with it. Huh? What, what do you want to do next? Because we talked about my business. You kind of know where I'm at. What are you trying to do? So the, the plan is that I'm retiring from stretching on a calendar in October. And then I'm going to actually start working on the business. So right now I, I just bought in three new trainees. I just tried I trained them for a week straight. They've got a few more weeks of practice. I've set up a course on the 18th and 19th, 18th and 19th. It's a two day, 10 hour course. I did lower the price to a thousand to 1100 bucks. I've got three people signed up so far and I didn't do anything fancy. I just, you know, I've, I've lightly promoted it and I created a little link tree with like a jot form, like, Hey, fill this out. You can pay right here. You know, I'm not promoting it that much. I'm going to probably kick it up a bit. I would love to get like six people in there and then doing some construction in my studio and just like, I'm going to knock some walls down and make it completely open. So just tables and, you know, maybe some dividers and really try to, I want to start building up my YouTube channel. Like my whole mindset, like as I'm doing all this is to build up our YouTube channel. Like, like you said, man, like, it's like, you don't make money from actually doing the work. You, you make money by creating access to the work. You know what I mean? There's a, there's a weird like feedback loop. Cause I don't want people to go out and like start a YouTube channel, make lots of videos. Cause they think they're going to make money, like ad revenue from yeah. YouTube. But if you put videos on YouTube and you draw followers and fans and you continue to build, you build search engine optimization through Google. YouTube is the second largest search engine on earth. Yeah. When people are looking for massage, Austin massage, Austin time massage, you know, whatever they find me. And the reason they find me is because there's 1300 videos on my YouTube channel and we keep adding them every day. That constant ticker tape of information, especially if you get to the point where it's not just YouTube, it's YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok, Pinterest, like you're all multi-platforming. It's a huge, it's a huge digital reach. But yeah. if you do it well, it means that the, the funnel all goes back to you and then people are interested in your work and you get to choose who you want to work with. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting ready to bring on some um, apprentices into the business and their job is to walk around with this. Record everything. The technology gets easier every day. So much easier. Yeah. So much easier. <coughs> so much easier. I, it, it, it's, it's really crazy. It's, it's, it's like, I, like you said, like now you're a digital guy and like, I started thinking to myself, like, you know, I'm more excited about creating content more than anything. Yeah. You know, it's like I made a uh, workbooks and DVDs years ago. And I'm not much of a, I'm not much of a salesman. I think but sales wasn't, I never had a job. Like I was never a car salesman or even like in a restaurant, like a server or something. I always worked in the kitchen if I was in a restaurant. So I made workbooks and DVDs and something kind of puzzled me because we don't, we don't sell a lot of them online. I mean, some, but not a lot. When I go to a class, the student will get a copy of the workbook and DVD for that class that they've paid for. And then I've got like three other workbook and DVD sets from later classes. When I go to Arkansas next week, I'll bring those with me and I'm going to make a guess. I might sell three to $500 extra just in workbooks and DVDs. And I always, I always go, why do they buy that stuff? And it's like, because it's right there. They don't have to wait. They don't have to deal with shipping. It's immediate. They can get me to sign it, you know, if they want to. It's, it's just, it's there. And they it's almost can, like you've learned, you've learned how to monetize everything. Oh, dude, you gotta, you gotta. I tease you people. 
Yeah, I think in the subscription service, I think your payment thing declined or expired. So you're not in our group anymore. But I told people years ago, I, I made this horrible video on how to brine chickens. So that was, I was on YouTube. I was making videos. I was like, I'll make some food videos. I made videos on how to brine chickens. And it's horrible. It looks like it's, it's shot with a security camera 10 years ago. And I checked it out in my analytics today. And that video made me $44. <laughs> wow. And it's, it's a horrible video. But what happened was right around the holidays, around Thanksgiving and Christmas, people would look up like how to brine the turkey. And the views would, would like jump. <laughs> But it's just like, it's because I didn't make it to make money, but it's hilarious to see that cumulatively the effect over time is each video generates five cents or 10 cents or a dollar. And all of that money starts to, to build up and, you know, add revenue. Wow. Monetize. Monetize. Yeah. yeah it's Everything. not enough just to have a stretch loft. You got to have a t-shirt. You got to have pants they put on that they can take the pants with them and beer koozies and water bottles with the stretch loft on it. You got to merch it, man. <laughs> everything. Everything. Yeah. Wow. And the thing is, I'm such a natural on camera. Like, I need to make sure there's a camera on me 24-7. Yeah. Yeah. So, podcasting. Why, why not? How do I talk to myself? So you have a building, right? Yeah. It, you said that there's like a big open space and like tables. Yeah, that's what it's going to be. I've got, I've got a space that I can handle, handle about four tables. Once I open it up, I'll be able to handle six. In person, you can figure this out. You do what works best for you. Yeah. In person, you can invite people in, even if, if it's on your phone. You put it on a tripod, have some lighting at least. Excuse me. You have other business owners, entrepreneurs in, and it's the podcast, and you, you talk to them live in person, but you're at the facility. Now, it's an in-person podcast, right? But yeah. when I have you on my podcast... I could literally, where I'm, I'm recording this right now. It's very easy. If you wanted to, I can take this when we're done, rip the audio from this, put graphics on the screen, including like uh, captions, and then release this as a podcast recording. And for some people, they're like, well, but why? And it's like, okay, so it puts links to your stuff on my podcast put links to my stuff on the podcast. And when I upload it to Anchor, Anchor populates Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, this podcast, Spotify, with links to our websites. And people can listen to audio, but they can see video. They're not going to listen to me in their car. I mean, sorry, they're not going to watch me in their car is what I meant to say. But they can listen if they want to. Does it make sense? Yeah. Podcasting is an amazing way of like networking with somebody, producing a ton of video, and just this. Here's what happens. I've, I'll, I'll take this. Let's say we talk for an hour. I rip this video, cut five-minute chunks out of it, and go, okay, now it's 10 different videos if I want to do that. And the little, the little mini podcast just advertise the bigger podcast. I have every fiscal incentive of creating a podcast, creating more video at a massive scale. Yeah. Yeah. And it expands. It, it's like I'm, I'm about to start doing uh, liquor tastings and coffee tastings and chocolate tastings and other things I'm kind of interested in with food. I'm about to start doing that. And I, and I'm going to, I'm just going to turn on the camera and go, listen, I'm not a, I'm a foodie, but I don't know a huge amount about coffee. We're going to explore it together. And I can tell you that I grind enough of my own beans. I'm like, I don't know what it is with the Ethiopian coffee, but it's got a different flavor profile. It's totally different than South American coffee. And I'm like, are these both just Arabica beans? 
but you draw more people to your YouTube channel who are interested in coffee and then go, what's all this crazy bodywork stuff? <laughs> Networking with other businesses. That's what the podcast is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah a lot of people, uh, Josh and I talk about this a lot because I'm like podcasting, you know, he's like, oh no, we're, it's still early. Trust me, it's still early. He's like, everybody wants to start a podcast, but the average podcast only has 20 episodes before the person retires. Like, I'm way past that at this point. And my, my podcast even, isn't even super consistent yet. Yeah. I mean, it's, in other it's, words... It's, I mean, the, the digital real estate, dude, the digital world is like, is the best world ever. It's the best world ever. You, you got a brick and mortar. You're just stacking digital on top of it. And it's, it. di it's digital word of mouth. More people find you know, out about it. I'm like, yeah, we could expand and build a franchise and all that. But, you know, I want to go public. I want to go media. Let's see if we can create, like, a, a holistic black, like, black stretch therapist. You know what I mean? Like, a whole show. We can create a show out of this. You know what I mean? We could record everything. We're like, people, our clients already know us. You know, like people, people come in and they say, we watch all your videos. Yep. I've watched all your videos. Yep. And so I'm like, we well, could create a show about what goes on in here. Yeah. Students, remember, I've got a $7 subscription and I've got a YouTube channel with 1,300 videos on it. A student will come in and pay me $600 for the day for a private training. And I go, cool. And I talk to them and go, you know, like, where did you find me? And they're like, oh, I've been watching your videos for years. And I go, cool. Where do you, where do you, where do you watch them? And you're like, YouTube. And in my mind, I'm going, why? Like, in other words, you're already learning the stuff on YouTube. Like, why are you coming and paying me? And it's like, they want to meet the guy and they want to hang out and ha get hands-on feedback and technique. But the reason I can charge $600 for that day training is because of all those, it's, it's a massive ad campaign. It's a massive marketing piece for years and years. It's like your net worth goes up every day. Oh, dude, it, like every, every, listen, I'll take a video out and this, this will be my TikTok. I, I kind of slowed down on TikTok for a while. And I was like, I, I took my phone and I was like, I'm deeply spiritual and I curse. And that's the video. <laughs> because TikTok is it's like, it's a different facet of your personality. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, it's just making content to hang out with people. And other people are like, yeah, man, I'm spiritual and I curse too. Like, you know, this is a different attitude. The one thing I like about it, you said you're good on video, and I agree with that. Very well-spoken, very physically attractive. You have much more melanin than I do. <laughs> when you are not afraid of being on camera, you get to play to that strength. It, it wasn't natural to me, like, initially, but I, I developed it very quickly where I could look at the camera just like it was my friend. And I think long-term, that perpetual... I can't see a downside to you producing a hundred videos a week. Even if they're really? 15 seconds. I mean, what's the downside? Because if, if you produce a hundred videos a week, that's 5,200 videos a year. Two years is 10,000. Three years is 15,000. Like what's going to happen to your digital reach as you continue to do that? It opens up more business opportunities in ways that I think, like the, the podcast, I, I, I take this, I upload it to Anchor, and people can sign up for my podcast to support <laughs> the ongoing work of the podcast, even if they just want to pay five bucks a month. But if you could find 100 people who are like, yeah, I, I really like Ben's content. I want to give him five bucks a month for the podcast. That's $500 a month. Yeah. Wow. It's like building your own empire. But it's, it's very much the cult of personality. 
of all the stuff you post, I paid attention to an entrepreneurial post. I shared one recently, I think in Massage Entrepreneurs. And the one I was taking with is you were eating some African food with your fingers. You were eating some yeah. curry and so it looked like some, looks like some collard greens or something. And I was yeah. like, man, that looks good. What's... <laughs> but see, that's the thing. It's like for a lot of people, they're like, I don't understand. It's not professional. And it's like, not all of your social media has to be business. Yeah. Your, your social media is like building connection with your fans. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's super crazy, dude. It's, it's allowed me to, to triple my prices. And like, I'll, be like, I'll be like for shits and giggles, let's take the price up a hundred bucks and people they'll still keep coming. Like they'll keep coming. The more content that I put out, and sometimes I'm like, ah, like maybe I'm putting out too much. I'm being too much, but no. So okay, when you when you put out content, where do you mainly put it? So on Instagram, okay, I put stuff in the studio. On Facebook, I just put like personal shit that comes to my head. Okay. Do do you make more content on Instagram or Facebook? Uh, I write more on Facebook. And do you feel on like Instagram, it's too, on Instagram? Like I'm a, too I'm a repetitive, post a day. huh? Do you feel like it's too repetitive? Not really. It's just like it will make me a con. I'll, I'll just be creating content all day long, you know. And I kind of like how I do it. Like I shoot, I go on in shot, boom, boom, boom. I go on Instagram, I add a little bit, I throw it out there. I don't spend too much time editing. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't. Yeah, don't worry about post production at this point. It, it's amazing what you can do with just this if you really want to spend time. <clears throat> Here's the illusion. We, because we produce so much video, I keep going, man, how many times do I have to show upper back and neck? I've already made like 100 videos on that. But they've not seen them all. And it's weird because like, they'll keep consuming the same thing. They'll keep consuming the same thing. I'm getting Kristen and Andrea and Danielle to do the time of size jam. Sometimes I'm in it too. When they are doing it, I'm the camera guy. So I, I take one of the cameras and I'm, I'm getting moving shots. I'm getting like more action, right? They're showing a lot of the same stuff that I show, but I get to see how the audience responds when a woman delivers it. When Danielle teaches it and uses like different language. And I go, ooh, that was nice. They like that. And you get to you get to change it. It's the same information delivered from somebody else. Yeah. I expect some people are gonna like me or not like me, and that has very much happened. But the business continues to grow. And then I think the brand, because you, Ben, aren't stretch loft. Stretch loft is the brand. And that's what people don't see about my work. They think it's all me. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm I'm filing a trademark like. They are the brand. My brand may be intensely feminine if more and more female massage therapists pick it up and start doing it. Because that's not me. That's the brand. Yeah. And, and there's like a, you know, I was thinking to myself tonight, like, I want to walk away from my business and do the corporate thing and push it and push it. But my business is booming because of me. Yeah. And honestly, I would have, I'd probably make more money and have less of a headache by being my own superstar. Like the stretch loft is going to grow regardless. The bigger I get, the bigger the stretch loft grows. Yeah. You see what I mean? They, they grow together. They grow together. I mean, they grow you're, together. you're the owner. You're always going to be the, like with me, I look at it and it's, I, I talked to Danielle and Kristen and Andrea about this. They're like, but I, you're, you're giving us the in-person classes locally. And I go, yeah, I've taught them for 10 years. And they're like, I'm like, guys, I'm making enough money online. Now we build and diversify. I don't feel like I lose money because students come in and take class with you. Students are going to take class with you and then want to do later classes that are more advanced on specific topics with me. The, the pie gets bigger. Like the other thing is in like in a capitalist economy, sometimes they act like, well, 
you know, I got to get my slice of pie so you don't eat all the pie. And I'm like, no, we just bake more pies. We're not having a flour, butter, or fruit shortage. <laughs> we just, we yeah. create more wealth. Yeah. You being a superstar, awesome. Ice T is a successful rap rapper, successful rock star, successful actor, successful media persona, and all around yep. badass. And it's all built off of what he did years ago as Ice T when he started in rap. Yeah. But he continued to diversify. Yeah. I mean, the, I think the, the, the rules have definitely changed. <laughs> you know, like any business, I put out a, a post the other day and I haven't made the content yet. I don't know I'm stalling, but I asked who wants to know how I get 200 plus leads a month to my business. And I think I haven't posted it because it's so fucking simple, but it's like, are they going to get it? I post content. I ask people to join me, whatever I'm doing. I post content. I show you what I'm doing. I'm very transparent. And then I create, you know, I put videos everywhere on my funnel page or on my, like, when you click to book an appointment, you don't go to like my scheduler. You get to a, a form that has a welcome video for me. Yeah. It says, Hey, what's up? I'm glad you're here. You know, come on, go ahead, book your appointment now where we stay booked about two or three weeks out, but we can't wait to get you in here. Just go ahead, put your information, even if you're not ready to book right now, just put your information in there so we can keep you on updates on like when we have openings, you might be the next one, you know, and people fill that shit out. Yep. We stay booked two, three, four weeks out. Any empty slots get filled. Yeah. So we stay in demand and it's, it's crazy. But there's other studios that are struggling. Okay. <laughs> Are those studios doing ongoing video production? Are they collecting emails? Do they have an extremely attractive, well-spoken founder who's wonderful with people and communicating on camera? That's when what's you, missing. When you add all those pieces together, man, that's a big, like a lot of people don't like me, but it's like, it doesn't matter because I put on enough video and talk to enough people that I find the people who like me and the business continues to grow. Those other businesses, in my opinion, are losing the word of mouth battle because this is word of mouth now. This is connection. This is also allowing Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, all these platforms to mine all of your data. Yeah. Yeah. It's a data-driven world. It's a data-driven world. So what do you think you're going to do next? You said you don't want to franchise. You kind of want to build the cult of personality. You want to be a rock star? Yeah, I'm going to build, I'm going to build the personality and I'll do some coaching. You know, I am going to get a lot more into education, you know, just like showcasing what I do. And like, like I've seen that, like when I teach or when I'm like, to, when I'm like, Hey, look, I'm about to release the lower back. And I teach people, people are like glued to it. Yeah. But I'm really, honestly, Rob, I'm just having fun right now. I'm just trying to see like, like I have a financial goal. I want to retire my mom next year. I want to make a hundred thousand dollars a month income, you know, and it's like, I, you can do that. I can do that. That's totally possible. Yeah. That's totally possible. So it's really just about structuring it all, you know? Yeah. And, and that yeah. structure, the infrastructure and the building and the layering, man, it's like really meticulous and long-term. Yeah. 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 It's, 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 yeah. You, you got to keep building it. You got to keep building it, but you know, I want to set myself up to travel around the world and teach and speak and just live, you know what I mean? Just, you know, from this conversation, I feel like I'm going to start giving this stuff away more, you know, I'm going to be unattached to it. So this is the, th the thing. And I, like, I, like I don't, I'm going to start my own stretch jam. Like, yeah, like, you know, I don't, I don't even know what to say about it because it, it's like, 
I'm doing it and it still confounds me. How can you give everything away for nearly free and still charge top dollar for it at the same time? Weird. Everybody acts like there's some trade secret. Like the students are all like when they take an in-person class, they're like, oh my God, he just he he just like shows me. And I'm like, yeah, I'm trying to get people to do this. And they're like, well, but aren't you like reserving stuff that's like secrets? And I'm like, secrets that are gonna help people? Secrets that help people with pain? I don't want any secrets. I want people to get help. I want you to like work with me, let's build. The difference is, you know, video scales. Online, right. YouTube, you know, the video just sits there till somebody views it. Then they'll pay top dollar for your individual personalized in-person attention. Yeah. Yeah. It's like they've seen Jesus. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, I, you know, like, like it's crazy. Like, people go, people pay $20,000 to go see Tony Robbins. Yep. To listen to the same thing yep. he says on YouTube. Dave, Dave Ramsey. People love Dave Ramsey, and Dave Ramsey has his following. And it's like Dave Ramsey's books and his radio show go over the, the exact same things as those conferences. But people love going to those conferences and, the, you know, and it's like, well, bless Dave Ramsey. He he built something and, and people are interested in it. Yeah. 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 The the death knells is when people don't know about you. Like I Ice T is a hero of mine for many, many years for a lot of different reasons. And I follow Ice T on Twitter and I follow him in on Instagram, I think. And there was a photo of Ice T, and he's in a plane, looking like a, a personalized jet. And he just laid back. He got sunglasses on, and it, the caption was something like, "This is what I look like when I'm thinking about my haters," or some, something like that. And I screenshotted that from Twitter, and I posted it on Instagram, and I tagged Ice T. And I was like, "When I deal with haters, I always go read Ice T's Twitter feed because I gotta, I gotta have the boss teach me how to deal with it," you know. And Ice T liked my Instagram post. And I was like, yes. <laughs> and it, it's just quoting him. It's just quoting him, but he was somewhere and saw it and went, hey, I, that's cool. That guy liked me, you know. Yeah. It's that thing. Because it's just such an innocuous post. I mean, I literally do this. So I drank a Waterloo. Waterloo is a brand of uh, like fizzy water. I don't know where they're located. I don't know if they're located in Austin. I would literally do stuff like take this, I'd be on a break it class, take a photo of it, tag the Waterloo company on Instagram and say, I love the watermelon flavor, you know, or whatever. And then Waterloo is like, they message me and go, oh, hey, thanks for reviewing our fizzy water. Now, why would my business want to connect with their business when it has nothing to do with body work? Yeah. Merchandising. One of the reasons I'm doing like beer and liquor tastings is I'm hoping that the local breweries will start mailing me, sending me beer because they want me to do reviews on my YouTube channel of their beer. <laughs> like you said, you said you monetize everything, right? Yeah. Whatever you do, structure it so that you can get paid for each step that's the key yeah that's the key i think right now i'm just in the action phase and just seeing like what comes up and then finding the people who can help me to structure it you know what i mean i'm a big fan of minimizing staff and outsourcing as much as possible you have to have somebody do the stretch sessions. You probably have to have some front desk staff, right? Yeah. 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 But it's all, it's impossible for you and I to do it all. Yeah. Yeah. But, 
you know what? At this stage, it's all an investment. Everything's an investment. You know what I mean? Everything's an investment. Like, dude, like I got, <laughs> I got a camera. I, I got my phone. I've got. I went out and bought two 512 gigabyte camera phones. Yep. Just so you know, we can be here all day with it. Yep. I've got a Dropbox account with a bunch of content, and I've just gotten comfortable being in front of camera. I've just gotten comfortable, like, you know. It's a huge. I I, I cannot. I cannot stress enough how huge it is if you make video regularly and you're comfortable. Like, listen, someone, a, a film crew could wander into my studio right now and I go, what do y'all want to do? And it doesn't bother me at all because I've done it for years now. Other people are still like, I don't know, this is weird. I'm not used to filming. And I'm like, get out of my way. I got video to make. <laughs> because what I've seen is the, the more time and energy I put into it, the, the more the, the students, the clients. It, keep it gives you your greatest work. return. It gives you your greatest return. Yeah. It gives you your great. I mean, I've seen that on Instagram, just the videos, the videos, silly stuff. Yeah. Dude, the, the video, videos, listen, this, like when I talked about your content, I saw you eating food. I saw an entrepreneurial post. One of the ones I enjoyed the most, it looked like you were in a restaurant working on some people and like stretching their neck. You just took some people cold. You could tell these people had never met you before. And they were like, whoa, man, that really, oh, that feels great. Oh, you're stretching my neck. Oh, it feels amazing. And I'm like, man, I want that. <laughs> yeah. 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 And yet, massage get, therapists still aren't making videos. I get my videos. camera to refocus. There we go. I said, yet a lot of these guys still aren't making videos. It's like the market. This is one of the ripest marketplaces. Yeah. When you this say it's a, a ripe marketplace, what do you mean? Meaning like it's a, it's, it's a fertile marketplace. Like the people who are in it aren't doing what they need to do. Right? Here's, so, here's what it is. They're afraid to be seen. I'm afraid people are going to judge me. And I'm like, they are going to judge you. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Like, I'm afraid people are going to call me fat. Okay. Do you need to lose weight? Because the camera might add, add 10 pounds, but, you know, it's like it just is what it is. You got to do. Yeah. I mean, if, you know, and the thing yeah. is, some people are better at, you know, spoken word. When I say spoken word, I mean writing. Some people are better at photos, better at this, better at that. You know, play to your strengths, but if you're one of your strengths is video, video is great because you can take video, clip video, repurpose video, repackage video in a million different ways. You know, you can take one hour long podcast and cut it into 12 videos and float it across multiple platforms. We're sitting talking about body work, but a lot of it was business. I could just as easily take some five minute clips from this and put it on LinkedIn. And then somebody starts contacting me for business advice. Yeah. Massage therapists in the industry I'm in, that they're afraid of people's judgment. They're very, very like they want to be accepted and they want to be approved of in high status because of certification and licensure. If somebody speaks out against them, they have a very negative response to that. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, on, on that massage group, they actually like cut off commenting on my post. I wouldn't doubt it. Well, I was like, like, wow, like, why? Like, let us, let us have dialogue. What, what post was it and why? Because I didn't it do was, it. it. It, so I went on there and I'm promoting my stretch class coming up. If it didn't and have like, any, any CECs, I'm like, no. It's like, well, they're like, well, how, this is an overpriced class for it to be a CEC or for it not to be a CEC, you know, who are you? Like, what's your, like, and it's like, go check out my Instagram, go check out my YouTube. Like that's, See? you know, go, go do your research. Are there CEs attached? It's overpriced. Who are you? It's all prestige based. Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry about, don't worry about them. I don't know about that specific post. When you post a massage entrepreneur as a post, I have value. 
I'd recommend if you post like class stuff there, do you make sure there's a video where you're teaching a little bit, showing them some techniques in a video? That way the posts usually stay. Yeah. Like but you gotta spark their interest and let them come to you. Yeah. The, the therapists are like, well, I don't, you know, like if I make video, people are gonna judge and, you know, and I'm overweight and I go, okay. So you're overweight. The clients have to come to you and you're overweight. So you're not gonna let them know who you are? Like I literally told someone, cause they were like, yeah, man, I'm, you know, I'm a little overweight. I don't wanna make video. And I'm like, dude, pick up your goddamn phone and document your weight loss journey. And tell him you eat too many Twinkies and sit on your butt. And he was like, whoa, that's like genius. And it's like, no, man, just, just show them what you do. I make regular posts where I, I screenshot haters. <laughs> and I go, here's the latest wonderful mail from fans. <laughs> you know? Because people respond to it. And they, you know, if you look at my Instagram, like you get a sense, like he's having a beer. He was drinking some mezcal. He was talking about spirituality. He's like making some food. He had a photo of a steak. He's doing body work. But you, overall, you get a sense of you. And that was, that was what I was proud of because you were talking about entrepreneurs. You showed a little bit of body work and then you were just eating food. Those are all things that like I relate to. It gives yeah. personality to your personal brand. Yeah, more of that. And it's okay, the, the polarization, I've, I've gotten flack from massage therapists because they're an industry where they want everyone to like them. And they're like, Robert, you don't want everyone to like you? And I'm like, absolutely not. <laughs> if everyone likes you, you have failed. You can't do anything, nothing, and make everybody happy. Somebody yeah. ain't going to like it. Listen, I took a video from TikTok and I literally, I downloaded this video. It was a cat. It was a little kitten eating a steak. And it's like, it's purring so loud. They had the microphone must be inside the cat. And it was eating a steak and just, you know, eating on the steak. And I just thought it was funny. And I posted it and said, this cat with a smile, like crying, laughing emoji and a heart. That video I posted on Facebook got 3 million views. Are you serious? Yep. It went viral because everybody and their grandma was tagging their mom and friend and family and to, to see this video, this cat eating a steak. And a lady, and here it, it finally happened. I got some hate mail and the lady's like, that video you posted is sick. You know, screw you, sir. <laughs> it's like... Three million people saw it. You know, it had like a hundred thousand shares or whatever. And one person was like, Well, I don't like this. <laughs> That's crazy. It yeah. comes with the territory. It's a part of it. I, I I I really think haters is a benchmark. When you start to win, because here's the thing, they don't hate on people who are failing. No. But when you, or I, I don't like what you're doing. And I'm like, okay, so don't like it. And that makes them more angry. Because I'm like, I'm busy. Like, I, I'm not trying to make Ben be me. I'm not trying right. to make my students be me. I'm trying to help them have successful businesses and draw the students who want to study with me. And they're like, well, we don't like what you're doing. And I'm like, so go away. Like, I don't even know who you are. I don't follow you and go, well, I don't like, the, I don't, I don't like the table massage you do. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, who are these people? <laughs> they're, they're Karens on the internet. <laughs> they're trolls. <laughs> Straight trolls. So more, more video production. I'd like you to think about the podcast. I think okay. you, you do well on video and you're well-spoken. And also what I've seen with you when you were asking people about how to get leads, that's like, to me, that's kind of like LinkedIn content. You could produce a lot of stuff from a podcast and cut that up and put it on like LinkedIn. If you were looking for more like entrepreneurs or business people to work with you, where you're giving them business advice. The other thing that happens is I think I learn more 
by having people in other industries on the podcast because they're talking about business in a, another industry. And I go, ah, that, that opened up like an idea. So I'm actually yeah. learning things from other businesses and other business owners by networking with them through the podcast. Okay. Okay. You know, whatever you're interested in, like literally you could have a podcast and like, yeah, mainly it's around stretch and health related stuff. But then as a greater piece of wellness, you talk about finance and you get somebody who comes on and talks about investing and investment strategies and why are bonds, you know, better than what do they call them? Not hedge funds. What do they call them? Mutual funds, mutual funds, individual stocks. Like, I don't know everything about that, but if you get somebody who's on, who's excited to talk about it, you can kind of glean information from them and vice versa. Okay. Yeah. You know what? I'll just start it. I think in my head, I'm like this huge fucking production, but I can actually just start it right now and just like introduce so it on the podcast. Anchor. Anchor is what I use. It's completely free. Is this it video, video or just voice? Say it again. Is it video or just voice? So uh, a podcast typically is just, just audio, but what I tend to do for this reason is I'll record the podcast using say zoom, just like this, because I can put this on YouTube and put captions on it. I can cut it into smaller clips and put it on Instagram and LinkedIn and TikTok or wherever, but on anchor, which is what I use, I can just upload the video to anchor and it just rips the audio file. Then I, I fill in the text, say who it is, say what the topic of the podcast is. And I'm like, publish new episode of a podcast. It's very easy to do now. So I could record it on Zoom. So that way I don't eat up my phone back, my phone megabytes. Yep. Zoom has cloud storage. I'm recording Zoom this on cloud Zoom storage. Cloud storage. Where is it there? It sends me a link. I can now take it, chop it up, put it on YouTube. Yep. And I got the whole audio and I got the video right here. And that is why you were saying you're good on video. That's why video is king. I can take this video if I want to. I can make it a podcast. I can make little mini podcasts for YouTube, LinkedIn, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. I can, I can take a transcript, I can rip this for captions, take a transcript of this podcast, make a blog post out of it, stick it on my blog with the video, with the link to the podcast, which goes in their ear. That's why video is king, because you can repurpose this in so many different ways. Wow. Okay. So that's what I'm going to start doing. I'm going to start podcasting and um, just up my quadrupled amount of video and content I put up. Yo, I'll just record everything. I'll just record I, everything. I don't see a downside to it. I just don't. Yeah. I mean, especially if people already follow me, I'm, I'm, I think I'm 600 followers away from hitting 10,000 on Instagram. Wow. 10,000? Yeah. Man, your stuff booms. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I so sponsor, if, I sponsor stuff all the time. If if I, I have the, if I had to tell you the other platforms I want to you use, if if you had any chance of going viral, I'd start using TikTok heavily. I would start testing TikTok and see what you think. Oh yeah, dude. TikTok, TikTok booms. Booms. I, I stopped for a while because I was busy with other stuff. It's a very different platform, but I haven't quite found my shtick on it yet. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I think that's really it. It's just finding like what your, you know, what your stick is. Yeah. On each one. You know, people on Instagram love to watch us, watch us stretch. People on YouTube love the instructional videos. Yeah. 
You know, Instagram Live works great. Instagram, Facebook Live doesn't. You know, Facebook, I can be more personal, but I'm getting ready to create a Benatanga Facebook page, like a Facebook business page and start posting stuff there and running ads from there. Like I really want to build up my own personal brand yeah. and you know, I'm a jack of so many trades and I'm just going to start putting all that stuff out there. Mm -hmm. Just like I haven't done in a long time, but I, I cook. So I'm like, yeah, I should make some food videos. And then I started thinking about like, no, nah, do some tequila tastings and beer and like add that to your channel. And people are like, I don't, you know, I don't understand anything to do with body work. And it's like, it draws more people to the channel who it's are like, interested yeah. in what I talk about. You, That's you all. You have fans. Yeah. You have fans. Because then you're the tequila beer drinking educator with four cameras. <laughs> Yeah. Because then it's like, wow, he's really cool. You know, he's and that's the thing. That, you know, they don't all have to like you, but the ones that do are like, no, I, I really like Ben. Ben's really cool. Like he's, he's a real guy. Like I could reach out to him and he'd talk to me. And that's yeah. a big deal for fans. Yeah. 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 Why, well, bye. Appreciate you taking the time, man. I got a bunch of notes from our conversation. Yeah. I always learn and I'm going to go implement, man. Yeah. Yeah. And I just, I thank you for just encouraging me to use the camera. Like, I think after one of our conversations, I just started going and I never stopped. Yeah. You know, it's been the number one thing for my business. How, ben, how old are you? I'm 37. Okay, because I'm 44, and I, I saw the digital revolution happen, but I wasn't, like, always completely aware of what, what was going on. When I was a kid, I remember the show The Real World, and it was kind of like, so they're not actors, but I guess the camera equipment's so inexpensive, they can just kind of film people's everyday lives. But I didn't think as a kid that the technology was going to become so compact that you could just make your own show. Yeah, and put it out. And that's, that's essentially what it is. And some yeah. people, you know, get lucky. They get on the right platform at the right time and find fans and stuff just explodes. I mean, my friend Josh, I told Josh, Josh is amazingly intelligent. Like, I, I love Josh to death. And we talked and he was frustrated about music, frustrated about this. And he couldn't, he couldn't quite, he couldn't quite get anything to take off. And I was like, Josh, you're already making some video. I'm like, right now, I'm telling you, this is year and a half, two years ago. This was, uh, I think it was before COVID. I was like, Josh, now TikTok. I was like, now and I meet with Josh about once a week. We get together and eat, hang out. I think Josh is coming up on 100,000 followers on TikTok. Wow. Let me, let me look real quick. Let me check. Where is he at? Because I was, I was in shock when I checked the other day. Do, 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 do. Oh, I'm, yeah. He only has 992.8 thousand followers on TikTok. Josh Terry plays. And here's what he did. Josh is a musician, hangs out with us at the Time Massage Jam. And the video that he first did that went viral was about home mortgages. <laughs> it had nothing to do with anything he normally worked with. But he, he built a following. And it's like, all of a sudden, it was like podcasts, people want to talk to him, cryptocurrency, like it keeps expanding in all these weird ways and every once in a while like because he he harshes me about like just like i'm giving you advice he kind of does the same to me and, and vice versa and josh is like you got you got to get on it you got to make more <laughs> you got to make more content robert and i'm like josh i'm tired bro <laughs> <laughs> but it he's on it yeah, he the thing it is, it, it, it's like, it. I don't know how it happened. It just happened for him. He found 
some people, the, the, the platform showed him to more people. He's got almost 100,000 followers on TikTok and other options, other investment opportunities, other podcasters, other interests and intellectuals are contacting him to be on his podcast and everything seems to be, you know, growing. Yeah, but it's not, it's not like, well, I went to school and I studied this and then I got a job in this. And then I worked there for 30 years and retired. It's like TikTok. Like that wasn't, I wasn't like, Josh, you got to make videos on TikTok because you're going to make a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. So listen, I think you're uh, getting ready to go. Did you need anything else for me? No, man. No, I got enough on my plate. Cool. So say if I uh, took this later and decided to do the podcast thing, do you mind? No, I don't mind. Okay. So if I do um, that, I'll, I'll make sure to tag you in some of the posts. Awesome. Yeah. One question. This Thai massage jam, like if I did something called stretch ed, right? Stretch what? Stretch ed. Yeah. How much you think I should charge for it? And how long you think I should have it for? Yeah. I, I don't know. Make a good guess and try. You can always backtrack. Yeah, I will think 125 bucks for an hour. Yeah, just make a good guess and then like test it. Okay. Yeah, some people tell me that I don't charge enough for the jam or whatever. And it's like, the jam is structured where they are the entertainment. It's not me instructing as much, if that makes sense. It's, it's, a, it's a community bodywork event. That was how I always described it. Okay. Yours might be structured a little bit different. You might want to charge more if there's more individualized, personalized attention. Yeah. Okay. Cool. 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 I right. appreciate it, man. Thank you. Oh, yeah. You have a good night.